I'm Dan. And I'm Joyce. And together we make up Elegant Minimalism. Everybody at some time or another has to get their trailer level. Now I've got a small trailer. Uh, for large ones, you have to have something pretty specific or pretty massive to do it. Um, and uh, some people actually have, you know, hydraulics or jacks to jack it up. But this is small and we're talking level here. Now, I have one wheel. Um, I've been using, you know, various boards and things to ride up on. Um, need to get up a couple inches, three inches, uh, really a little bit more than that. So, I decided to make myself a, a better leveling system. Now, there are lots of them um, out there. Um, there are some that are very intriguing, like the Anderson levels. We roll the vehicle up on this uh, curved wedge-shaped thing, and that's pretty intriguing. Um, and I could make one of those, but I don't think I want to. There are these levelers that come with padded blocks and you ride the wheel up on. And um, I've, I've tried them. I've never had any, but I've tried them. And I found that the area that the wheel sits on is so small that if you unhitch the camper from the vehicle, you can't chalk the wheel because there's not enough room on this little plastic set of discs. Um, so it, it can roll off. I don't even see the draw between some of, on some of those. There are some bigger ones though, I think that would be okay. Um, I'm gonna make something that uh, is pretty straightforward and uh, probably cost about, well, it would cost $12 to make because that's how much I paid for the materials. So let's get started. What I'm planning on is making three nesting risers that are about one and a half inches high for each level that you use. Total would be four and a half inches. So what materials are we gonna to need to make this? Um, basically two things. We'll need a piece of two by eight by eight framing lumber. Um, I chose, this one is, is fir, you could use spruce. Um, you might be tempted to use pressure treated lumber and that would be perfectly fine. Um, except uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's really, really heavy. And this will not be left out in the rain any period of time, I'm, it's not a deck. So, um, you know, I've built stuff like this before, it goes in, it goes out, it's in the rain, sometimes it's not, and it's perfectly fine, it won't rot. Um, and by getting some standard framing lumber, it's gonna be a lot lighter uh, to handle. Um, pressure treated wood, particularly when it's wet, is really, really heavy. Also, screws. I'm choosing to use a deck screw. Um, almost anything would be okay as long as long enough to uh, go through some of this wood, maybe with a little countersinking. And um, I might add a few more materials later on, but it's not necessary to get this thing made. It's just um, a little convenience is later. So let's get started. Here's an expanded diagram showing what each piece will look like and their lengths uh, when finished. We're going to need some of the small pieces for this. And since this is eight inches wide, it's actually seven and a half. Um, cutting this 16 inches should be allow me to uh, get some strips out of this uh, that'll be plenty long. Uh, I'll be cutting each one in half uh, to go across across the uh, two by eight. 16. taken and put the blade at a 45 degree angle so that I can cut a wedge off from the side of this. So I flipped it over to make a two-sided wedge um, that will go on the top piece. The blade has now been put straight so I have a wedge here and I'll be cutting it perpendicular here or flat. I've 
I've again moved the blade to 45 because I need one more wedge shape like this. So this is what we've ended up with. A double wedge, two single wedges, and what's left over from the other side, which would be about a one and a half by roughly one and a half piece of wood. Okay, I got my pyramid shaped one that I'm gonna put right here. And I've got this wedged shaped one that I am going to put right here. And I have a 15 inch tire, so I have to measure the distance that the board will be, which will be the distance between the outside edge of this and this, which is 17, uh, let's see here, 17 inches between the outside of these two. I'm actually gonna cut this just a little bit longer. Um, it'll give me a little wiggle, wiggle room in adjusting the uh, distance for the tire. Um, and I can always trim it off later. And a 45 degree cut on the end, each end of this. Um, that'll help the tire be able to ride up, up the board. Um, when I start to assemble it, uh, you'll see what, you know, why this happened. Okay, here's the 45 on that top tiered board. And here's one of those pyramid shapes. And now we have a 45 degree angle for the tire to roll up and then drop into this pocket. So, the next thing to do <coughs> is to mark off where 19 inches is going to be from this outside edge to here. This is where the second wheel chalk, I guess you'd call it, is going to be. Well, we've got our 19 inch piece right here, and we've got our wedge on the back, so when the tire rolls in, it'll stop there. We have our two-sided wedge, I'll keep calling it a pyramid, even though that's not right, on the front, so that you can roll up in, and the tire, 15 inch tire should fit right about in here. Then, we'll put another piece on the front for measurement purposes, because this is going to be screwed to the, to the second piece underneath, the second riser. And this strip that we had left over uh, when, we, when we cut these, these wedge-shaped pieces is going to go on the back for, so that this can fit inside in between them and be held in place. So, the distance of the length of that next piece of wood will be 22 and one half inches. 22 and one half, which is right there. Okay, let's take this and transfer it up here. So I can do it in sections here, like this. This wedge goes on the front too long by the way I've got to cut it down and then this piece goes on the back right here okay two risers are assembled now we have to decide on the length of the next one so again a wedge shaped piece in the front a square shaped piece in the back Now, what I'm going to do is purposefully leave a gap right in here. And the reason for that is when the tire, if I had this right up on the edge, the tire might hit this and just push the whole block back. But if I move this back a bit, and 
what am I looking at here? About an inch and a, and a half. The tie will easily ride up on this and then be sitting on here. And then when it goes to move up here, there'll be less chance of it. It'll, it'll be start having downward pressure and less chance of it pushing, pushing the whole unit backwards. That's the plan anyway. So, we've got this all together. Put our final block of wood on the back over here so that the whole unit will have something to, to sit into the top two pieces and we'll mark it. And that's where we're gonna cut it. Okay, let's take a look at all the pieces again. We have a long piece with a 45 on one end, and we have a block as a stop on the back of it, and then this piece goes right up against it. Then we have a 45 degree riser here, and then we have our final piece of wood here with Another stop in the back. Straight. We've got a stop for the top block. We have a piece right here for the riser, let me bring this up a little bit. And then finally, we have our pyramid shaped on the top. Well, right now, um, I'm gonna drill a bunch of holes with uh, countersinks to put the, uh, the screws in, and um, I'm gonna put this thing together. This part is probably overkill, but I don't want this thing sliding back on me um, should I hit a smooth surface. Because sometimes um, you're on some very loose gravel, sometimes you're on cement, a cement pad, uh, things slide really good on it. So I'm gonna try to give it a little traction. I'm gonna cut a slot in the bottom of this, right near the entrance. And I have 
I actually have some stainless steel, but any steel would be okay. A piece of metal, strip, and I'm going to embed it right into the bottom to make sort of a cleat. I'm anticipating that about 95% of the time, I'm just gonna need two levels. Uh, from past experience, that's about as high as I've ever needed to go. I mean, mostly an inch or two or three at the most. The four and a half inches would be a lot. I'd have to be in a really bad camp site that's uh, really, really uneven. King George once said, there you have it. Um, this is the one I'm sticking with for a while until I find something better. Um, and um, I think it's going to work just fine for our needs and can't wait to use it probably next year because winter is coming. And uh, once fall happens in Maine, which is on the verge, winter is very close behind. Thanks for watching.